What's up everybody? Today we're going to go over one of the most common end games you're ever going to see. It's a rook versus two connected pawns. Now we're going to look at multiple situations and I'm going to show you which side wins and how. Now let's take a look at probably the most basic example here, which is two connected pawns on the sixth rank, with the king not at all involved. Now for this, you're going to need to remember this golden rule. Two connected pawns on the sixth rank will always, always be better than the rook. Here, Black's rook is not going to be able to stop the pawns from promoting no matter what he tries to do. If he goes to b1, white is going to push the a pawn. Now if he goes to a1, white is going to push the other pawn. And if black takes, white is then going to promote the b pawn. Alright, so it really doesn't get much simpler than that. So now let's take a look at a variation that's a little bit more complicated, where you've got one pawn on the fifth rank and one on the sixth. Now here, black is actually the one in the winning position. Can you tell me the correct move here, though? If you're thinking rook to a1, unfortunately, that's going to allow white to win the game. Now, white wouldn't get his two pawns on the sixth, but instead, he's going to push to b7. And if you try to attack it with rook to b1, white is going to defend with a6. We try and get our rook to b6, pawn to a7, and we're going to see the same result as before. No, instead, the winning move for black here is actually moving the rook to b1. You want to put the rook behind the most advanced pawn and afterward move it between them so that you can attack them both. Now in our case, after b1, you're going to want to move it to b5. Now from this position here, no matter what white does, black will be able to capture white's pawns. King moves to g2, black moves his rook to b5 attacking that a pawn. White moves to a6, and black will get there in time to stop the pawn from promoting. Now. Let's look at one more example here with the pawn on the fifth rank and the other one on the seventh. It's black's turn to move, and which side do you think is the winning side here? If you're thinking black, unfortunately that's the wrong answer in this situation. Now in this new position, black's rook is not going to be able to stop white from promoting. If he tries with rook to b1, pawn moves to a6, and we already saw a pretty similar example of this earlier. But if black tries to defend with rook to e8, then white would just push the a pawn and promote like so. Okay, now let's take a look at a couple examples where the king is a little bit closer to the action. This one here. Are you able to tell, just looking at this position in front of you, who is going to win? Now that's a bit of a trick question because it actually doesn't matter if you say black or white here. You're going to be wrong no matter what. Now why is that? Well, it's because you can't tell which side is winning in this position unless you know whose turn it is to play. If it's white to move, then white is winning. If it's black's turn to move, you guessed it, black's got the upper hand. Now let's see if white goes first. We can move our pawn to a7, then black's going to retaliate with rook to a1. We move king to b5, and if black continues with the checks, white could hide behind the pawns and promote the next turn. Now, if instead black decides to defend with king to d5, white is just going to push the b pawn, and again, black has no way of stopping this promotion. If he takes the a pawn, the b is going to promote, and if he checks with rook to b1, the king would go after the rook while evading the checks. Okay, so we see that if white goes first, white wins the game. But what if black goes first? Is one move really going to make all the difference in this position? Why, yes. Yes, it does. Here, black has two ways of defending this, with either king to d7 or rook to a1. If we move the king to d7, white would try the same strategy with pawn to a7. But now, the main difference here is after king to b5 is that black could arrive on the b7 square first. And we're going to see why that square is the ideal position for this king. So we have king to c8, king to c6, and now we said we want to arrive on the b7 square. But, we see that we can't due to white's king. Now the winning move here is rook to c1 to drive that king away. And after, king to b7, victory is secured for black. Alright, now I really hope why you guys can see why that square is the ideal square for the king. First, it stops the b-pawn from advancing. And second, it defends the a8 square. Now, no matter what white does, black is going to be able to capture both of his pawns. If he promotes, then black is just going to capture, and if he decides to move his king instead, black is going to put the rook behind the most advanced pawn, like I mentioned earlier, and capture the other pawn the next turn. 
the rook to a1 variation is more or less the same, but with a different move order. Now the goal for black is still to bring the king to the b7 square. Okay. So now let's look at another interesting variation here where white has pawns on the fifth rank and black rook is cutting off the white's king. Which side do you think is going to win now? Okay, I'm glad that you guys are a little bit more hesitant to shout out your answers now because you still don't know whose move it is first. But in this position, with the correct play, white can never lose. If it's white's turn to go first, it's a win for white. And if it's black's turn to go first, it's a draw. So we're going to look at white playing first first. He moves pawn to a6, black retaliates with rook to f1, and now what are you going to play here as white? Pause the video and let me know in the comments what your move would be. Because if you said pawn to b6, unfortunately that's the wrong answer. Black can put you in check with rook to a1 and win your pawns the next turn. Now, if you played king to b4, congratulations, you drew the game once again. Rook to a1, king to c5, king to c7, b6, e7, b7, and then d6. You push the a pawn, black goes to a3, move to b6, and then black moves his king to c5. And now, no matter what move you make, you're going to lose your pawn. Now the best play in this position ends up being to trade the a pawn for the rook and just accept the draw. The only winning move here is king to a2. This move stops the black rook from getting behind the pawns and forces black to play f5, but unfortunately for him, he's not going to be able to stop the a pawn from promoting. Moves to a7, rook takes, and queen. If black decides to defend with rook to f8, we can move to a7, then rook to a8, move to b7 to defend the pawn, f7, and white would move to the b-file to escape the check and push to b7. Now what's fascinating here is that if white moves to b2 instead, this position is a draw for black because black can move to the b-file with a check and win a tempo, which would allow him to win the b-pawn. Okay, okay, but what if it's black's turn to move first? The save's pretty straightforward. It would be the same defense with rook to f1, and if white tries that same winning move as earlier, unfortunately, it's not going to work this time, and it's actually going to be a losing move. Because now, black can play rook to f5, and we know that when the pawns are on the fifth, it's a losing position. Okay, so the drawing move for white here is either pawn to a6 or king to b4. But we looked at pawn to a6 in the other example, so I'm only going to show you the quick b4 version. Black defends by bringing his king in and sacrificing his rook to collect both pawns as we already saw in the previous example. Okay, now let's see a little bit of a more interesting example, which happens in this position. It's white's turn to move and win the game. Now, as you can see, black is one square away from promoting, and you really can't waste much time lifting your rook up. So, here, the winning idea is to put black in a zugzwang, while maintaining the rook on the first rank to stop the promotion. So, let's say a1. We see that the optimal square for our king is d2, to stop both the d-pawn's advance and to capture the e-pawn if black ever decides to promote it. Now, you can either move your king to e3 or e1 here. They're both going to work but I think e3 might end up being easier. So king moves to c2, and again, we're going to make a waiting move with rook to g1. So if black pushes, white is just going to take the pawn, and if black goes back to c3, rook to c1, and king to d2 is going to secure us the win. All right, and now let me show you just a quick example for king to e1 as well. Right, and there we have it. Now I hope you guys found this video useful because I can guarantee you're gonna see some variation of this in one of your end games. And I really hope I managed to cover all the important variations of it, but if I forgot some, please let me know in the comments and I'm gonna make another video to add on to this one. I'll see you guys in the next game.